Hello everybody, I'm Nick and welcome to another episode of CodeCop, the series where we go over questionable advice provided on LinkedIn, Twitter or blogs and we try to turn it into good advice. LinkedIn specifically is notorious about providing really really bad advice disguised as good advice behind the umbrella of oh, it has a few likes or oh, it's been shared so it must be good. So I think videos like this are needed to actually debunk some of those bad advices and turn them into good ones. Now today's piece of advice hits a bit close to me because I'm using benchmarks in my videos to show you when something is performant or not, but benchmarks are only as good as your ability to understand what you're presenting and also the benchmark technique itself. And today's technique is horrible. Nobody should be benchmarking like this and using those benchmarks to present a point that, yes, it has some truth in it, but the way you present it completely invalidates your point. If you like that content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe. For more training, check out my courses on dontrain.com. Okay, so let me show you what I have here. And as always, everything is anonymized. This is not about the author themselves. This is about the advice that they provide. So the post has this text, discover the power of efficiency in link, which Sounds AI generated, but okay. Unleashing the results of a groundbreaking benchmark test that showcases blah, 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 blah. The whole point is you want to showcase the superior performance of the any method on link over the count method, not property, method in link. This is a game changer for existing checks. Okay, it's building it for way more than it actually is. But we're focusing that this is a link thing, a link specific issue that you should be using any over count to check for existence. Now, if that sounds a bit weird, like why would you use count over any, any makes sense, count doesn't make sense, then you're right. But we're actually going to go deeper into why it's a problem because the author of this post doesn't mention it at all. But I want you to keep in mind, this is about link. There is nothing outside of link like entity framework presented here, just link. Then we have a bunch of images. So performance boost, prefer any over count, which is a general statement, which basically is presented as always prefer any uh, over count. Uh, I've run a benchmark test to showcase the power of any over count method in existing checks and how prefer any improves performance. You may see the results and also source code share in GitHub space. And this is actually good. It's good when these people do provide the code so we can actually see what they did behind the scenes in its entirety. Because just by seeing this, I don't know exactly what benchmark you're running and so on. I want to grab the code. Now, they also give test environment, which we don't really care about this. And then we have the code and this is where it gets weird because you're presenting this as a link comparison. But actually, I see a DB context here, which I know it's an entity framework core construct, which stores some form of data, in this case, children in a database, and it's running on the database, not on an in-memory link construct. So link on entity framework is there just to be turned into a SQL query. It is not there as the default link implementation. It has different implementations behind the scenes. And the way these two queries will work over here, if they run against a database, which by the way, they will, is that the first query, the count, will literally go through every single line of the database, every single row of that table, to make sure that this name, John, is matching before it comes back and checks whether the count of this is more than zero. That's because there is no top, there is no limit on that query. It will literally scan everything because that check is outside of the link we're sending to the database that is converted to a SQL query. Over here at the bottom, the any will be converted into select top one where John is matched. And the moment the first John is matched, we're going to return back to the query. And that's why it's going to be so much fast because you're doing fundamentally different things on the entity framework level. Yes, technically it would work the same if it was link, but you're hiding something very important, which I'm going to show you in a second. Anyway, here are the results. So the any returns in 423 microseconds, while the count returns in 135 milliseconds. Memory allocated is around the same. Now, before I show you how I would run this benchmark to actually truly show you how any and count scales and what's the difference, I want to show you the code that this person has on GitHub. Now, before I move on, I'd like to let you know that we just launched a brand new course on Dom Train called From Zero to Hero Anti Framework. In that course, our new author, Hannes Lawet, will take you into an eight-hour journey learning 
everything there is to learn about NT Framework. And this course is actually two courses into one. We did think of releasing them as two separate courses, but it makes more sense for your experience to be one massive one. Hannes is an excellent teacher who has been teaching NT Framework for years. He does conference talks, workshops. He's just amazing. And I know him personally. He was one of my very first handpicked authors for Dome Train, and he knocked it out of the park with this one. There is no better NT Framework results out there right now, all up to date with everything you need to know all the way up to .NET 8. Now, as always, to celebrate the launch, I'd like to offer the first 500 of you a 20% discount code. So use the link in the description and don't wait for Black Friday because this course will be excluded on Black Friday. So 20% will be the max you can get. All right, enough with that. Now back to the video. So as you can see over here, there is a database filled in with data. We can see that by using a DB context over here and also a fill database with fake data test. And then we have the code we showed on that uh, image. All that was omitted from the context of the post, which I hate, but besides the point, this isn't really testing link, which is what you're presenting the post to be. This is practically testing the database provider. Like, what are you testing? How fast Postgres is? How fast SQL Server is? How fast SQLite is? How fast your disk is, your CPUs? That doesn't really make any sense and it's a very harmful benchmark. Now I've shown how you can test NT framework in benchmarks in another video when I talk about Dapper and NT framework performance, you can check that out. But if you truly want to test any account with all the context of how count works as well, here's how you should do this. Now what I have here is I'm using a faker to generate an amount of realistic looking fake data, in this case, fake people with a first name, and I'm using a seed. So every time that data is generated, I'm getting the same list of fake data over and over again. So for example, if I was to debug this, and say, go ahead and generate 100 fake people, then the names I'm going to get will always be the same sequence where Justin is the first, the 50th over here will be Miriam, and all the way to the bottom, the last one is Chris. And if I was to recreate this and regenerate these names, you're gonna see the same Justin, Miriam, and Chris. So I have a way to generate deterministic data, which is a must for benchmarks. The code from the post I just showed you, the field database with fake data, it's still using bogus, but it doesn't actually use a seed anywhere. So the data generated will be randomized every single time. So that parameter, John, that the user is looking for, won't even be guaranteed or not guaranteed to be there in the same location. And the location is important. And it's important because it can make the any method respond faster. The higher something is on a list of data, the faster any will match it and the faster it will return. If it's at the bottom, it's going to return, well, very slow because you have to go through all the data to get to the bottom to match it. If it's at the top, it's going to be very, very fast. If it's at the middle, it's going to be average. Let's see all that in a benchmark and keep in mind, Justin is first, Miriam is 50th and Chris is 100 in a sample size of 100. So I've reverted back to my benchmark and I'm going to go over here. Now as you're going to see, I'm generating 100 people, same seed over here, seed one. So every test will have the same set of data. And what I'm doing is I'm using the exists with something that is there and is located as the first item in that list. Then have something in the middle and then have something in the end. And I'm matching with count. Then I'm doing the same with any to see how fast any is matching with the first, 50th and 100th. And then I have something that does not exist. Nick is not part of that 100 items. So this will return false for both methods. If I run this benchmark, then that's the result I'm going to get. Same memory location for all of them. But look what happens count will return consistently the same no matter where the data that i'm trying to match is located because it has to go over everything to get the count and make sure that nothing beyond the first match is ignored any however responds as you'd expect if it immediately matches something at the very top you're gonna get a 10 nanoseconds response time if it's at the middle it's around half of what the complete runtime would be so 188 around 200 and then the last thing will be around 400 so 375 so you see how performance changes depending on how far something is when you use any in that enumerable and then count falls and any false response as you'd expect around the same okay count is a bit less performant than any but not by much because they both have to go all the way down to make sure that nothing was missed and nothing was matched i loved how bad this example is because it actually gives me a chance to show you how you can do it the right way so I'm glad it was there, but please, when you benchmark and when you use benchmarks, at least use good benchmarks. As always, if you see posts like this, please send them over on LinkedIn, Twitter, or whatever links in the description down below. This did indeed come from one of 
you shall really appreciate that. But now I want to know from you, what do you think about these benchmarks and people posting on LinkedIn in general? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching and as always, keep coding.